So now for this portion, we're going to uh, finish the part inside of Solid Edge. As you can see here on screen, I have the auto surfaced portion of the model and the curves in the same workspace. So if I turn off the surfaces, I exported the curves from Geomagic uh, Essentials, and then I exported the auto surface. And what I did is I went over to the application and imported each IGIS file from Geomagic Essentials and brought them in and saved out the part. Then I came over and I took one part and I copied and pasted it inside of another. That way we have both the curves and the surface inside of the one workspace. So now you can reverse engineer using the uh, solid edge tools in whatever fashion you want to. Uh, for today, just to keep it simple, I'm not an expert in solid edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the curves to reverse engineer this part. And then I'm going to use the auto surface as a reference to see where I'm at and what I'm modeling. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and model the fan blade here. As you see, I have the curves that I brought in from um, Essentials. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to come over to the surfacing tab and I'm going to create key point curves over top of the curves that I brought in. Um, so you can see here that what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring uh, and draw over top of nice clean key point curves. So in order to do that, I'll just come over to key point and then you'll see I'm just going to draw right over this. And I might fast forward this a little bit so you don't have to watch me go over every single one. But I click finish on that first curve. Now, just to show you that I did do that, I'll turn off my initial curves and see that I drew that curve directly over top of the other ones. Now, if I come over here and I just finish that one. Again, one more time just to show. There we go. All right, so I drew the outside boundary. Now, if this was just a straight boundary fit surface, I would leave the inside pieces alone, but it's not. There is a shape to this inside. Um, so I'll go ahead and grab these ribs that go across the middle and draw those. Now, if I go ahead and complete that, you'll see that I drew the entire surface here. So the top and bottom, again, this is where it's nice to have the surface in the background, are not exactly the same. It's not a consistent thickness surface on this uh, blade. So now I'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, that means I have to model the bottom side as well. But before I do that, we'll go ahead and create a bounded surface. So if I just select the four sides, and then I accept it. Now if I come over and I select the guides, I add these guides in, and then hit OK. So now you can see that I created a surface from that top area. Now if I turn on my curves again, or I turn on my surface, you'll see that I need to extend it past, because what I'm going to do I'm going to extrude a top shape from here. 
I'm going to use this surface to trim the top and bottom. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn that off, and then you, I'll hide my curves. Get rid of those. And then if I come over to the surfacing tab again and come over to extend, I can click on these boundaries here. And then extend those out just a little bit. So now, if I turn that on, you can see that I extended that far enough that I can trim that top and bottom. So now let me go ahead and model that bottom side. Um, I'll go ahead and model it and um, be back in a sec. So now you can see that I modeled the top and bottom surfaces. So what we're going to do now is if you look at the part here, the main auto surface. You see that we. I'm just going to model a uh, blade shape from the top down, and then replace the face of the top and bottom of that extrusion. Um, so in order to do that, I'll just go ahead and sketch on this top plane here because this is already aligned to the world coming from Essentials. So I'll come over to sketching, and we'll go to line. And we'll go ahead and select this base plane here. And then I'll just click over to my view here and go to my sketch view. Now I can go ahead and hide those uh, surfaces if I want to. And just model directly over top of the auto surface. So if I come over to sketching and use my line tool and just draw a line out in space, another line out in space here, we'll just reposition that. And then I'll go ahead and draw a circle from the middle and I'm going to just draw it down the middle of this uh, solid there and you'll see here in a second why, why I'm doing that and then we'll snap that to the outside so with solid edge I don't have to necessarily trim all these pieces together I can just draw rough out my sketch and then get out of it and then come over and do an extrusion just using that profile and select what loop that I want to use. So if I come over to click on this area right here and accept it, and then let's extrude this one inch. So let's let's actually edit that and do like 0.95 there. And you see, you can use that as a reference to see and make decisions reverse engineering how I want to. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and use my surfaces. See that top surface and the bottom surface here. So if I come over to surfacing, there's a tool called replace face here. Um, and what you can do is select the face that I want to replace, this guy right here with this one. And you'll see that it will trim that top surface there. And the same thing goes for the bottom. So I select that, accept, and then it will replace that face there. So now you see that I have my my blade uh, created. Um, so from here, um, there's a few different things you can do. You could go ahead and pattern this now if you want to, or we can go ahead and draw the, the center. So if I come over here and I click on this and go to sketching, We'll go ahead and select that plane there. 
and then let's go to view sketch view again and this again is where the auto surface comes in handy so you can come back over and turn that on and let's create our inner and outer shape so if I'll just create that the outer and inner and again you can dimension it as you see fit but you see that I dim that I just drew the two shapes. But you can redimension it like I just did earlier and then come back over to extrude. Grab this area here and then extrude that. The, let's do that 0.93. So there we have our shape. So now if I want to go ahead and turn off the curves, show the solid, now I can come over and just pattern the part to create a, uh, a pattern of this blade around the middle. So in order to do that, I'll just come over to the pattern tool. So if I click on the object that I would like to pattern, the first protrusion, and you can see that I have the option to do a circular pattern over here. So I can select circular pattern. And then set it to three. There I've created my circular pattern. Now from there you can do all your typical cleanup as far as adding rounds. and do all your modeling that you would normally do inside of SolidEdge. Um, 